Okay, thank you so much. So, as the speakers uh, before me, I would like to thank the organizers for putting together such a wonderful conference. So, the goal of uh, my talk today is uh, to discuss a novel approach of how to extend frequencies of integrable PDEs to spaces of functions of low regularity or spaces of distributions. But before uh, I state the main results of, uh, um, on this topic we have obtained, I would like to give an application to the well-posedness of MKDV2 and the uh, modified KDV equation. And let me mention right away that all of what I talk about uh, today is joint work uh, with uh, Jan Molnar. Okay, so let me begin with the KDV2 equation. So we consider the KDV2 equation on the circles, uh, period one. The KDV2 equation is uh, uh, an evolution equation, dispersive evolution equation of fifth order. It comes up in the long wave approximation of water wave equations. Of course, the coefficients chosen here, or written down here, are of very specific nature and in the approximation many more uh, of these type of equations come up. But this specific choice of co uh, coefficients makes that this equation is actually an integrable PDE. First it, it's, it's a Hamiltonian PDE and the specific choice of uh, equations makes that it's actually in the KDV hierarchy. Therefore it can be written in a Hamiltonian way, so DDTU is equal to dx, the L2 gradient of the Hamiltonian H2, that's the KDV2 Hamiltonian. It is given by this expression, so it involves the L2 norm of the second derivative of U. So H2 is well defined on the Sobolev space H2 and has some nonlinear uh, parts. dx is usually the Poisson structure introduced by Gartner. So I recall this is the second Hamiltonian uh, in the KDV hierarchy. So the zero Hamiltonian, usually referred to as H0, is the L2 norm. And the first one is the uh, famous uh, uh, KDV Hamiltonian. So the well posedness result which comes from this analytic extension I was talking to at the beginning for the KDV equation uh, 2 uh, reads as follows, it's well posed on L2, despite the fact that it is fifth order and the Hamiltonian is of second order. So it's in a defined only in L, L2, L2. So for the convenience we restrict to the symplectic cleave of Sobolev spaces with average zero. So this is a Cosimir of this Poisson bracket. The same results would be true on any of such leaves. Okay, and then also have to introduce some manifolds m s zero d. So these are the functions u in Sobolev space H with average average uh, zero, so that the L two norm is constant, and because the L two norm is the zeros Hamiltonian in the KDV hierarchy, it is invariant uh, under the KDV two flow. So this manifold is invariant under the KDV two flow. So the res well positedness result for the KDV2 uh, equation reads as follows. Uh, KDV2 is globally in time C0 well post in HS0 for any S bigger or equal to 0. It means that the solution map S continuously extends to, I mean, from more regular data where it is known that uh, solutions exist, it extends continuously to a map of the following type. So initial data in H as zero goes to solution. These are continuous functions in the time interval minus TT for arbitrary T into H as zero. And this map is continuous. However, this map is nowhere locally uniformly continuous on H as zero. It means that if you give me any open non-empty uh, uh, non set U on HS0, then if I restrict S to this set U, it's not uniformly continuous. In addition, 
if I take s bigger or equal to one half, and d is strictly positive, otherwise it consists just of one potential, the zero potential is uninteresting, then this map actually is uniformly continuous on this manifold. Uh, but in, on contrary, if s is in between zero and one half, then again the solution map s is nowhere locally uniformly continuous even on this ma manifold, even if I fix the L2 norm, it will be nowhere local uniformly continuous. Okay, then the second result, a group of results concerns ill posedness and to describe these results I have to introduce a renormalized KDV equation which I refer to as KDV2 sharp. So it is again a Hamiltonian equation and, and I subtract this term here. This is, uh, corresponds to the Hamiltonian H2 sharp, but I subtract 10 times H2 H0 squared. So again, this is an integral PDE because this is uh, the zeros uh, Hamiltonian in the KDV hierarchy, and therefore the difference, of course, is again integrable. So then the result on ill posedness goes as follows. The modified, uh, the renormalized KDV2 equation is globally in time C0 well post on each subalus space H as 0 uh, for any S strictly bigger than minus 1. So for all distributional spaces H as 0, KDV2 sharp is still well post. Again, it means that the solution map S sharp continuously extends from H as 0 to the space of continuous functions on the time interval minus dt to H as 0. As an immediate corollary, it says that KDV2 must be ill posed below L2 due to blow up of phase factor. So if I represent the Fourier series, the, the solution of KDV2 sharp in Fourier series, let's write it down like this. So this would be the n's coefficient of the solution at time t of KDV2 sharp with this initial data. Then I, these coefficients compare to the corresponding Fourier coefficients of the solution of the, K, of the original KDV2 equation with the same initial data V as follows. The nth Fourier coefficient is obtained uh, from the nth Fourier coefficient of the KDV2 sharp equation times this phase factor. Mm -hmm. And of course below L2 this phase factor blows up because H to the L2 norm gets infinite. Okay, so the results improve on earlier results uh, on, on, on well posedness on, on the circle. And uh, um, uh, there has not been so much results in the periodic case, but more recently a lot of results on, on, on the line, in particular by Guo Kwan Kwan and Kenny and Pilo, where they looked at uh, 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 solutions uh, on the energy space contained in H2. Okay, so much about. Uh, KDV2. Now, corresponding results for the defocusing MKDV equation. We also have some results on the focusing one, but I don't want to talk about right now. So, the defocusing MKDV equation, everybody knows, and the circle is given by this equation. So, it uh, differs from the KDV equation by the fact that instead of u, I have here u squared. Again, it's a Hamiltonian PD. This is the symplectic gradient where uh, dx again is a Poisson uh, structure from Gartner and this is the L2 gradient. The MKDV Hamiltonian is given by this expression. It's dx u squared plus u to the 4. So in KDV you will have u to the 3. Here you have u to the 4. So here we have an ill posedness result of the MKD equation below L2 and, and this goes to, to state it again. I have to renormalize the MKDV equation, I call it MKDV sharp. So it is obtained, MKDV sharp is obtained from MKDV by replacing u squared by u squared minus the L2 norm. Again, this equation is Hamiltonian. H sharp is its Hamiltonian. It's H minus 6 times H0 squared. And again, H0, uh, uh, the L2 norm is conserved by the MKDV flow and, uh, and therefore uh, it will be easy to compare the two flows. 
And uh, in order to state our ill posit results, I have also to introduce the Fourier Lebesgue spaces, FLP, P between 1 and infinity. So this is a space of periodic distributions whose Fourier coefficients, or so sequence of Fourier coefficients, are in LP. So of course, due to Possevaux's identity for P equals 2, FL2 is just the usual L2 space. But for P stricter than bigger, this is a big space, it's a big space of distribution. And it gets bigger and bigger as P goes to infinity. In particular, for P bigger uh, than 2, this contains elements which are not even measures. Okay, so the result for the MKDV goes as follows. MKDV sharp on FL uh, on Fourier Lebesgue P with P between 2 and 0 has the following properties. It's locally in time C0 well post, meaning that for any initial data V in LP there exists a neighborhood V and a time TV so that the solution map as sharp continuously extend in this way as before. In the case V is equal to 0, we can have a, strict, uh, a slightly stronger result, namely the uh, 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 equation is not only locally in time, uh, a C0 well post, but actually globally in time well post on V0. So this would be true for any T bigger than 0. So again, as in the KDV2 equation, we have an immediate corollary saying that MKDV equation is ill post below L2 due to blow up of the phase factor. So again, if I Fourier, take the Fourier representation of the solution of MKDV sharp and write it in this way with initial data V of X, then I can compare the Fourier coefficients of uh, KD, MKDV sharp with the ones of MKDV in the following fashion the nth Fourier coefficient of the corresponding MKDV solution is the one of the K MKDV sharp equation times this phase factor. So again, if I'm below L2, this phase factor gets infinite. So of course, there has been many work on the MKDV. Oh, so maybe first a few comments. So we expect MKDV sharp equation to be also globally in time zero zero uh, well post everywhere on FLP but there is one little thing we don't at the moment we don't know to prove at the moment and I also mentioned right away because I might not have time uh, 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 in, during this lecture to, to explain anything of this that the key ingredient in the proof of theorem 2 is to view the MKDV Hamiltonian as the uh, corresponding Hamiltonian and in the NLS hierarchy. So it's the fourth Hamiltonian. So NLS is uh, the third Hamiltonian in the NLS hierarchy and MKDV the fourth. So does this mean that your result is also valid for the complex version of the equations? Yeah, yes, we could, uh, maybe, yes, absolutely. The, uh, actually, we do extend the frequencies to the to the system. We call it MKDV system because it's actually, of course we have to be in a neighborhood of the real case. It, we cannot be uh, uh, arbitrarily away, uh, far away because there uh, we probably have hyperbolic structures of the equation. Uh, so of course there has been many many work on MKDV on, on the circle. Essentially it is well posed uh, for HS as big or equal to zero. So uh, and then there have also other works. So maybe I don't want to spend too much time on this, but just mention maybe a little bit more in detail one result uh, by Luc Moline on ill posedness of MKDV below a, uh, L2. So uh, he proves that MKDV is ill posed in HS for S strictly bigger than zero in the following sense. The solution map is not continuous as a map from C0 infinity with the norm HS coming from the Sobolev space with S strictly smaller than 0 into C0 minus TT uh, periodic distributions. So we can view corollary 2 as sharpening Luc's result, saying that ill posedness of Luc is really uh, uh, due to the fact that you have blow up of phase factor. Okay, so give me, uh, let me give a uh, short outline of what I want to do in, in this talk. So the method, we will we prove these uh, results, or 
the so-called nonlinear Fourier transform or Birkhoff map or normal form transformation. So it makes, these are new coordinates which make that the equations when expressed in these coordinates are actually linear and the dynamics are described by frequencies omega n. So the crucial part in, in, in proving this uh, well poisonous ill poisonous result results is uh, by extending these frequencies in the <coughs> corresponding spaces of uh, functions of low regularity or distributions. So as applications of this analysis, uh, of, of these extensions of these frequencies, we have already mentioned, or the well positiveness of the PDEs, as, as stated, but also and that actually was uh, the moti original motivation of why we started to do this, is it uh, applies to Hamiltonian perturbations of such PDEs. So it, uh, is imp it has important Im implications on the properties of the action to frequency map, and also it allows to analytically extend the Hamiltonians and to discuss its convexity properties, which are important for Nikolashev type results for perturbations. So uh, to keep the exposition <coughs> simple, I will explain the method actually for the proof for the KDV frequencies, but even in this case actually we improve known results. At the end, if I have time, I will discuss very briefly the defocusing and KDV equation to see how, one, uh, uh, how it connects with the NLS system. Okay, so to start, I have to review quickly this <coughs> non-linear Fourier transform or these normal coordinates <coughs> for KDV. Actually, it is, these coordinates are good for the whole hierarchy, for any Hamiltonian in the Poisson algebra uh, generated by the KDV equation. So the setup is the scale of Sobolev spaces, HSE, C stands for complex value, these are periodic <coughs> functions. We include S big or equal to minus one, so some ne negative S's are included here. So as I said, we have the Poisson bracket, which was introduced by Gardiner. So these two functionals f and g on this space this sufficiently regular L2 gradient <coughs> have a, a Poisson bracket defined in this fashion. And note that uh, the average is a cosimere, meaning that for any functional, if I put the average as the functional g, then this is identically zero. So this Cosimir leads to symplectic leaves and in the sequel I will only restrict to the zero leaf. So average zero and again the z refers to the complex numbers. So then to state the results on normal coordinates I also have to introduce sequence spaces. So these are LPP sequences, complex valued, so this stays for c. And uh, they have weight s, so this is the weight and to the sp. And zero stands for that uh, the Fourier co the, the sequence, the element of the sequence in the middle is actually zero. Has to do with the zero leaf. Okay, and then I, we also introduce the real subspace of this, consisting of all complex sequences which have the property, like for Fourier sequences, that z minus n is a complex conjugate of Cn. And then to each of such a sequence, we associate a sequence of actions for n big or equal to 1. They are obtained by multiplying zn with z minus n for all n big or equal to 1. So just as an exercise, because I will use this later, we will, have the, the, we will consider sequences in uh, LP spaces with weight s plus 1 half. Then the corresponding actions has double weight, so this is 2s plus 1 and p gets halved because of the square. And as a special case, if we have, are in the real subspace, then this is a complex conjugate of this, so i n is bigger or equal to zero, and then the sequence of actions is actually in the positive quadrant of this LP2 sequence space. Okay, and then the uh, integrability of the KDV hierarchy can be formulated as follows. So as our base space, we take h minus 1, 0, so, so the real space of functions in Sobolev space with average 0 in uh, s equals minus 1. We tell you then there exists a complex neighborhood of this space in this complex space, uh, this complex Sobolev space, and a map. 
from this neighborhood into the corresponding sequence space, uh, associating to each potential uh, the corresponding coordinates, complex Birkhoff coordinates, referred to as complex Birkhoff coordinates, so that the following properties hold. When we restrict this map to the Sobolev space H as zero for any S big or equal to one, then actually it's a real analytic diffeomorphism onto this sequence space. There is a two missing here, S plus one half two. Second, phi is canonical, meaning that the Poisson brackets of the coordinate functions are the standard one. Of course, here we have complex coordinates, so we don't have one but an i instead. All other brackets vanish. And thirdly, the most important property is that the Hamiltonians in the KDV hierarchy are real analytic functions on the actions only. So it means that in HKDV, so this is the Hamiltonian is defined in HS, so the corresponding sequence of actions is in weighted L1 space with weight 3. So if my potential is positive, then the actions are in the positive quadrant L3, 1. And correspondingly, if I have the KDV2 equation, then uh, I get this kind of real analytic map. And lastly, actually, phi of 0 is 0, and the differential of phi at q equals 0 is essentially the Fourier transform up to this little weight, which comes from the Poisson bracket. So as I said, this map is usually referred to as Birkhoff map, and the coordinates as complex Birkhoff coordinates. The principal property of phi is this 3. It means that it linearizes the PDEs in the, in, the, in the KDV hierarchy. So then we come to the frequencies, the topic of my talk. So the frequencies of KDV and KDV2 equations are given by, so we take the Hamiltonian and the nth frequent is obtained by the partial derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the nth action for any n big or equal to 1. And then the equation, as I said, linearizes in these coordinates and it, they read as follows. So the nth coordinate, the time derivative of the nth coordinate is minus i, this comes from the Poisson bracket, omega n k dv c n. The omega n's k do not, are invariants of the flow because the actions are invariant and hence the frequencies. And hence these equations can be very easily integrated and the same for k dv two. So key ingredients in the proof of theorem 1, theorem 2 are the, the extensions of, the, of these frequencies to uh, spaces of functions of low regularity and distributions, and in addition, asymptotics of the frequencies as n goes to infinity. So the setup we choose to achieve this extension is as follows. So we write, so I, as I said, I do this only for the KDV frequencies, just to save a little bit of time. So uh, we write uh, omega kdv n as this is the frequency of the area equation, sort of the linear part of the kdv equation, plus, let's say, a remainder, which we call uh, omega kdv star n. And of course, it's enough to extend this omega kdv star. And in order to obtain asymptotics for omega n, actually you want to extend not each frequency by itself, but we want to extend it as a map. So we look at this as a sequence. So we have to determine from which space to which space this uh, uh, free, it's usually called the frequency map or the action to frequency map, which in integrable systems and in perturbation theory plays an important role. Okay, so here, here is the main result. So uh, for the KDV, uh, uh, KDV star frequencies. So the omega KDV star analytically extends as follows. So we can view the frequencies either on Sobolev spaces or on the corresponding spaces of action. So I wrote the two at the same place because this might be a little bit more difficult to decipher than just the Sobolev space. So they extend to H minus 1, 0. So on the level of actions, this means we are in the positive quadrant of L1 sequences with weight minus 1. And it goes not quite to the same space for s equals minus 1, but a little bit uh, larger space, namely uh, an LR space uh, with weight minus 1 for any r strictly bigger one, uh, than 1. But if s is between, in the open interval, minus 1, minus 1 half, then we go from the space L 2s plus 1, 1 into the same space. 
and if s is bigger or equal to minus one half and then again we have somewhat a weaker space on this side this has to do because this has asymptotic expansions in one over n and it appears at some point and you cannot improve okay then we have asymptotics so essentially the nth frequency uh, uh, omega n k d v star is minus six i n so this is the nth action variable plus an error term which can be estimated in this way and this error term depends a little bit on the s so in i mean there are more precise estimates but just to keep it simple i i stated in this way so if s is between minus one and minus one three this is the form of the error term we get and if s is bigger or equal to minus one three it actually doesn't improve again due to asymptotics which you cannot change in one over n okay thirdly uh, we have seen that if is s between minus one and minus one half then omega kdv star is a map from the space to itself and uh, therefore i can look at its differential and we can prove that its differential is actually fractal it's actually minus six identity plus compact and then i mentioned also because for one application i need this that we have a special case actually we can also extend the frequencies to Fourier Lebesgue spaces, but I just take one example. This would be Fourier Lebesgue s equals minus one half, uh, p equals four, which leads to uh, an action space of L2 plus. So, also in this case, omega KDV star can ex extend the real analytic map, and the differential is flat home. Okay, so this is the essential result on the frequencies and I will discuss a little bit on the proof in the second half of my talk but first I want to give applications so of course one application we have already discussed but I would like to go back a little bit so first we can use these frequencies to analyze the PDE the PDs considered the integral PD is considered in Birkhoff coordinates so it allows to analyze the dynamics of the angles in a very precise way. So we decompose any of such frequencies which come up in an integral PDs in the following fashion, a n plus b n plus omega n star. a n is a polynomial in n with constant coefficient. b n is a polynomial in n with flow invariant coefficients. And then omega n star is of the form leading part plus remainder. So just to give an example, in the K for the KDV frequencies, the ANs would be the uh, frequencies of the area equation. If I consider it on, not only on the zero leaf, but on the whole sub -LF space, actually I get the BN, which is 12 times the average of Q times NP, and then omega N KDV star is minus 6 N plus remainder. And similarly for the KDV2 equation, this would be the frequency of the linearized equation at zero. Bn would be uh, uh, this kind of uh, 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 expression. And again, omega n star would be linear in i n plus a remainder. So the Bn's and the omega n's are possible cause for the PDE for not being uniformly C0 well post or not being locally uniformly C0 well post. The growth of these coefficients might create phase decoherence, and which will lead to these weaker uh, notions of, of, of well posedness. And of course, it will lead to ill posedness in case of blow up. Okay, then, uh, of course, the, uh, one can analyze this uh, using these frequencies the PDE in the original Sobolev spaces. So if ST is a flow map in the Sobolev space HS0, uh, we denote by ST phi the corresponding flow map in the Birkhoff coordinates, and then the flow map ST can be obtained from the one from the Birkhoff map by conjugation by, through, the, through this uh, Birkhoff map due to the fact that phi is symplectic. So how can this be used? Let me illustrate this just for illustrative purposes for the KDV2 equation on HS with S bigger or equal to 1. So one can prove <coughs> that omega 2 star is actually a, 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 a continuous map from the space of actions into L infinity, which is uniformly continuous on bounded subsets. 
and so are the corresponding Birkhoff maps and its inverse. And uh, because Bn2 is constant on the leaves, uh, with d equals constant, uh, the KDV2 uniformly C0 well post on uh, this submanifolds MS0t. So by analyzing the frequencies uh, in, in, in this way, one gets this type of, of, uh, of results. Okay, then just maybe as a, as a remark, let, let me mention from this analysis, it suggests to uh, think of a possible role of the critical sub -LF exponent SC in the, in the analysis of ill posedness. So if I look at the Fourier, uh, if I can, uh, write down the solution in Fourier space, then I can uh, write it in this way. So an of t is an amplitude, exponential i omega t the phase factor, and exponential i n 2 pi x. So a possible scenario for ill posedness in HS is, uh, and the possible role of the sub critical sub -LF exponent is, if s is smaller than s0, we have, blow up, we have uh, ill posedness due to uh, the amplitudes, blow up of the amplitudes. If, uh, if we have already ill posedness before SC, it might be due to the phases. So that's essentially true in the MKDV equation following our results I explained. Okay, so second application as I mentioned is the convexity of the KDV Hamiltonian. So to explain it I introduce so this is a KDV Hamiltonian and we renormalize by uh, subtracting a term which gets very large if I go into uh, functions of or spaces of distributions. Uh, then because KDV, uh, KDV Hamiltonian is defined on H1, therefore the corresponding uh, spaces of actions is a positive quadrant uh, of L1 sequences with weight 3. Uh, is real analytic. So there was a conjecture by Sergei saying that H star KDV analytically extends and is strictly concave on L2 plus. So the L2 plus is the space of actions I was mentioning in theorem 3. They said I will use it later for applications. Here it is. Now in earlier result, Big Bayef and Cooks improved that this Hamiltonian is actually concave. So they prove this for finite gap uh, potentials and then by continuity show that it's concave once you know that you can extend it continuously. And then uh, last year actually we, we proved together with collaborators that uh, the H star KDV actually extends to L2 plus and it's strictly concave near I equals zero, so at the origin. And using uh, our theorem 3 now, the property 4, actually the conjecture 3 is almost true in the following sense. So this renormalized KDV Hamiltonian is strictly concave on an open dense subset O of L2 plus, uh, with uh, the origin being an element of this open dense set. It means the following, that if I ever my action is in this open set, then the Hessian of the KDV uh, star, I mean this is the same actually as the Hessian of the original one because I just deducted a linear term. The Hessian of the renormalized KDV Hamiltonian is strictly concave in the sense that I can bound it from below by minus C L2 norm of J for any J in L2 where the constant C can be chosen locally uniformly so around it. Yes, absolutely, thanks. Okay, so as I already mentioned, convexity property is relevant for stability results of Nikolajev type. Okay, so maybe there is also an uh, application to the action to frequency map. Maybe I leave this in order to be able to explain a little bit. But, but Thomas, yes. um, where it loses strict concavity, it is degenerate concavity, there are flats, is that how it loses it? Uh, so it's open dense, so we don't know. I mean, Sergei thinks it's everywhere, but I don't see any reason why there should not be some zeros in between. Right, but that's the failure of strict concavity. Yeah, that's, it's, it's always concave, but strictly concave on this open dense subset. So for local, for perturbation theory in a local way is enough, of course. 
but uh, and the fact is we prove that the differential of the frequency map is Fredholm, and that allows us to, to get to, together with analyticity to have the open dancing. Okay, so uh, outline of theorem three. So I recall theorem three was the analytic extension of the uh, frequencies. So I need first to introduce what are called the flow exponents. So on the real line, the corresponding notions would be probably the transmission coefficients. So these have been already introduced in the seminal paper by Peter Lex in the 75. So for Q in W, so W is this open neighborhood of H minus 1, 0. We look at the Schrodinger operator, so this would be a distribution. You can do spectral series still for this, and you, uh, the spectrum is discrete. The eigenvalues come in pair. So maybe I write them, so if it is real, uh, so this is the lowest, then they are, uh, if Q is real, then they are on the real line, and they satisfy, they can be ordered in this way. So uh, the pairs never uh, coincide with another one, but the two elements in the pair might coincide. Then we define the gaps, so this would be these intervals here, and the gap lengths, which would be the size of the lengths of, the, 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 of, of these intervals. And then we have here another gap, G0, which is to the left of L0, which is infinite. Okay, then uh, I have to introduce the discriminant of the thing. So, of course, if Q is regular, the discriminant is given by the trace of the flow K matrix, and one can show if Q is sufficiently regular, then uh, actually it has a, a product, this product expansion involving the eigenvalues of, of the Schrodinger operator. And in case you're in low distribution, you use directly, you define the lambda by using this product expansion. Anyway, product expansion will be all over in, uh, in, in the analysis of, uh, the, in the estimates of all the quantities involved. And then we introduce a canonical root of delta squared minus 4. This usually gives rise to the hyperelliptic surface associated with the spectral problem. And it, uh, is, uh, this is well defined on C minus the gaps. And for Q equals 0, just to give an example, it's uh, sinus times square root of lambda. Then the flow K exponents, so these are the, exp the so we have the, I, the flow K multipliers, would be the uh, eigenvalues of the flow K matrix. And if you write them in exponential form, you get the flow K exponent. And one of them can be written in this way. So for any Q, again, even if flow K theory doesn't make sense, because delta makes sense, you can, this, you can define this in a perfect way. It's well defined, also it doesn't, uh, even if there is a little singularity here, this is integrable. <coughs> okay, so uh, these are a list of important properties of the flow K uh, uh, exponent. So f of lambda is analytic away from the gaps which are open. So if the two eigenvalues here coincide, actually this flow K the f of lambda extends analytically into this double eigenvalue. And we have specific values at the periodic eigenvalues at lambda 0, by definition it's 0, because we start integrating at lambda 0 plus. And here one can show due to, to the fact that the potential is periodic, I get here minus i n pi. And then <coughs> we introduce a version of this flow K exponent by normalizing it differently, fn of lambda, so that at lambda equals plus minus, lambda plus minus n, this is actually zero. Then one can prove that fn changes sign across the gaps. So here we have different signs, but there are limits as we approach the two sides of the gap, and hence the square of fn actually analytically extends in the neighborhood of gn. We have estimates, we can have an explicit formula of the gradient, and the fn's are related to the actions by this contour integral. Gamma n would be a contour around the gaps. Okay, and then most importantly, there is an asymptotic expansion of f of lambda. So actually, we use later on only f4 of lambda, so I write down the expansion right for this. 
And uh, of course, we have a little problem. If we do this for distributions, it's enough to do it for real finite gap potentials. Finite gap potential means that only finitely many of these eigenvalues are simple and the rest are all closed. And it means that the potential is C infinite. Okay, then one can show that there is an expansion as L goes to infinity of this form. So it's actually a, a meromorphic function, has a pole at infinity of order 2. Similarly, but we, so we see the, at the point of the residue, uh, we, the uh, KDV Hamiltonian is involved. Similarly, for the KDV2 equation, we use instead of f to the 4, f to the 6. And this makes that the KDV2 uh, uh, Hamiltonian appears again at the place of the residue. So later on, if you do contour integration, it's a way of picking up the Hamiltonian. Okay, now contour integral of uh, four around simple eigenvalues because we know outside this is, inter this is a, it's an even power, so we know it's analytic. In particular, it's analytic here. So because I have finitely many gaps uh, open, I know that outside the big disk, this is uh, analytic and therefore I can use contour integration to pick up the residue here. And on the right hand side, I will have by contour deformation just integral of our contours on the open eigenvalue, uh, pairs of eigenvalues. So S is a set of Ks where the eigenvalues lambda k minus lambda k plus are simple, meaning that gamma k is different from zero. Okay, so this gives us the, the corresponding formula for the KDV2 equation. And then uh, the, the idea is to develop this expressions further in order to get the formula for the KDV2 equation. Now let me explain this a little bit in more de detail. Now here is the crucial idea. So from Hamiltonian formalism we know that when I express <coughs> the equation action and angles then the uh, ends frequency is nothing else than the derivative in time with respect to the ends angle. And this is equal to the Poisson bracket of the HKDV Hamiltonian with theta n. So, of course, in order to have the angles defined, I need that the n's gap has not, uh, cannot be, is not collapsed. So this goes only for simple eigenvalues. Okay, so this allows us to get a formula for uh, the um, uh, omega for the uh, <coughs> KD, for the n's KDV frequency in the case where n corresponds to an open gap. So it is equal to this expression. I substitute our expression we got from the residue calculus for HKDV. This is the expression. <coughs> By the property F5, I know how to compute the gradient. I insert it here in the Poisson bracket, and I get this. And now we use a very important identity from our book, saying that the, uh, gra the Poisson bracket of delta Okay, so, where, so this is where Cn is this has this product expansion. The P, these are actually related to holomorphic differentials on the Riemann surface. So these are very well known quantities and play anyway a very important role. They come here a little bit out of the, of the sky, but they are not. Okay, so here are uh, sigma and k are the zeros. These zeros are completely determined by this equation. So this is a normalization of the holomorphic differentials. And they can be easily shown in case the potential is real. They have to be within the gap for n different k, for k different n. Okay, so we insert and we get this expression here. And now we expand f of 3 as fk minus ak by cubed and uh, uh, get formulas for getting this way a formula for MKD for a KD for the n's KDV frequency. So for this to express this we introduce the amps moment of of uh, the um, of, of the of the FKLs and these M M the now we use uh, sort of important symmetry properties of, of these moments and that is actually why we can succeed in extending to such low regularity. So first of all, for all odd m's, these moments are identically zero. And this has, to, so I don't want to explain because I'm running out of time. So uh, also if gamma k <coughs> is equal to zero, then 
these moments uh, of the, of the, for all m and n are zero for this specific k. And finally, the zeroth moment is nothing else than the integral of these uh, holomorphic differentials over the Gapski comma k, which uh, is nothing else than Dirac delta times 2 pi. So using all this, we get the following formula for any real finite gap potential of average zero. We have this formula. Omega nkdv is 2n pi cubed. So actually this comes from expanding from this exp if I expand this expression, I get this term, and this actually gives precisely this. <coughs> and correspondingly, the uh, omega uh, the, um, the frequency of the KDV2 Hamiltonian, the ends, has an exp a formula of the form omega and p to the fifth. This is a linear part plus this part, which uh, yeah, we already came up with when we discussed frequencies, plus omega n2 star, where omega n star can be expressed of the moments of f and k of the moments 2 and 4. Okay, so the strategy for proving theorem 3 is we use formulas uh, uh, of theorem 6 to, uh, to analytically extend omega and kdv and omega n2 by an analyzing in detail these moments by showing that this uh, series, uh, by showing that they individually they analytically extend to h minus 1, first of all, second, by showing convergence of the series by, expand, by, uh, by deriving asymptotics of these quantities. And for this we use uh, sort of quite involved uh, estimates for product expansions of terms which involve uh, in, in, in these moments. Okay, so maybe I leave this and then just maybe one last little thing. So coming back to the NLS system and the MKDV equation. Uh, I, I, uh, so I, I said I, at the very end, if I have time, I would briefly say something, how this can be, um, how MKDV comes up in the NLS system. So I recall the NLS system is a system of uh, uh, Hamiltonian PDEs with, uh, for phi plus phi minus in HSHS, complex valued. Uh, given by this expression. It's a Hamiltonian PDE, where the Hamiltonian is given essentially by the NLS Hamiltonian, but with these two components. And the Poisson bracket is the usual one uh, with this factor minus i, because I'm in the complex version. So if I restrict this system to uh, a real invariant subspaces, I get actually the defocusing NLS and the focusing NLS equation. So if I restrict to phi plus equals phi minus complex conjugate, I get the foc defocusing NLS. And if I restrict to phi plus equals minus phi minus complex conjugate, then I get the focusing NLS. And this NLS system has the NLS hierarchy. It starts with H0, H1, this is the moment, and then H3 is the NLS. And as I said, H4 is related to the uh, MKDV equation, we call it the MKDV system. <clears throat> so this would be the first equation, one of the two, in, for this Hamiltonian. And then uh, this uh, Hamiltonian system has also invariant real subspaces, namely in the case where in addition to uh, phi plus being the complex conjugate of phi minus, they are equal, so U is actually real then we obtain the defocusing MKDV equation. And if phi plus phi minus is real, but they differ by a sign, then we obtain the focusing MKDV equation. So uh, then uh, the idea is to look at uh, the Hamiltonian H4. We actually uh, uh, expand the Birkhoff normal form theory to Fourier Lebesgue spaces FLP with P negative, with P between 2 and infinity to the spaces of distributions and then extend the frequencies of the uh, MKDV system to these Fourier Lebesgue spaces. 
And uh, then, of course, we have to make a little analysis because it's a subspace we are looking at for MKDV, how the uh, Birkhoff coordinates uh, um, restrict in this case of these real subspaces. So maybe I leave the details here and stop. Yes. yes, you, you showed us how to ex extend these, uh, these frequencies to wider uh, spaces uh, for yellow bag. Okay? Yes. Uh, FLP for P bigger than 2. Yes. What about P smaller than 2? I mean, this is easier. Small, this is probably easier. Yes, you, because you it's uh, contained in L2, yes. so that the yes. series essentially yes, made. But you get additional yes. properties. Yes, you can. Yes, it was a little bit of less of interest, but can be done. Yes, for instance, you can do everything on, on the Venus space. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Nice yeah. space. Yeah, I agree, I agree. More questions? Uh, there's, there's recent interest in um, well-behaved uh, space quasi-periodic, or even space almost periodic uh, solutions. Uh, and that it involves then, uh, for, for KDV, yeah. other ones too, but I yeah. just heard of the KDV. Yeah. And that, invo of course, involves uh, some uh, important uh, spectral theory of that, so you have to do the good reflectionless ones. But then the time evolution uh, seems to be, at least this sounds like this is machinery that would work for that. So this is a question, is that a possibility? I think so, yes. I think so. Meaning gaps are no longer ordered, but it doesn't really matter. I must admit I did not look into it, but uh, I think the machinery should be extendable to this case, yes, absolutely. So, but we were more thinking of by looking at the action to frequency map in infinite dimensions. So there we can also show that this, but this is in the periodic setup, that the map is actually a local diffeomorphism. So that means you potentially you can do KM theory with infinitely many, a uh, tori of infinite dimension. Because you can control the, the infinitely many frequencies through the action, you can go back and forth. More questions? All right, if not, let's thank Thomas okay. again. Thank you.